Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. In the last couple programs, I've been talking to you about mercy. And yesterday I showed you how mercy is um, also connected to healing or that healing is one of God's expressions of his mercy. Healing is an expression of God's mercy. So let's me go, let me go back to the definition real quickly of mercy. And mercy has to do with deserving what you do deserve and what you don't deserve. Mercy is not getting the punishment that you do deserve. It means pardoning and forgiving the um, punishment of the guilty. They, the guilty do deserve punishment, but it is waiving that punishment, canceling that punishment of the guilty. And in a court, it could be reducing the punishment or something like that, but it's not getting the punishment that you do deserve. And it is getting blessings, gifts, and benefits that you don't deserve, that you don't deserve. And so when you don't deserve something, you ask for mercy. If you don't deserve something good that you are wanting. And, you know, many times Christians have felt the unworthiness because of sin. Because of sin. And the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. And it is true that everyone has sinned and sin is deserving of punishment. And sin is also a disqualifier for blessings and benefits and gifts. It will disqualify you. But that's where mercy comes in. Mercy comes in. To not give you the punishment that you do deserve and to give you the gifts and blessings and benefits that you don't deserve. And so if you feel like you're unworthy, then great. Mercy is for you. And actually, that's everybody. If you feel like you deserve everything good that God can give you, then you are blind and deceived and proud because we all have to recognize we have messed up, but that's where we call on God's mercy. And then mercy becomes available to us. And as I said yesterday at the close of the program, I want to say it again right now. To remind you, who can receive mercy? Who can receive mercy? Proverbs 28, 13. He who conceals his sins does not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Isaiah 55, 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon and Luke one fifty, that's five zero, his mercy extends to those who fear him. And fear there is not being afraid, but honoring and reverencing him. And Matthew five seven, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And so how do you receive mercy? Number one, ask Matthew 7, 7, ask and you shall receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. So you must ask for it. But asking alone really isn't enough because number two, you must repent and that is confessing sin and coming to God. What is that again? That's humility. That's coming to God in humility, not being proud, arrogant, and rebellious, but humbling yourself before the Lord, turning to him, 
repenting of known sin. So the repentant heart receives mercy. And number three, show mercy. This is very important because you and I probably know people that are very harshly critical of other people. Harshly critical, judgmental of others. If you hear somebody talking about other people in a negative way, they are criticizing and judging. We've talked about this on previous programs. Criticizing and judging others is a blocker to receiving God's mercy because you are not showing mercy. And I have seen it where a person who is a judgmental, critical person and you see them and hear them talking critically of others a lot. They do it a lot. They just criticize this one and that one, this person, that person, this thing and that thing. They will find it hard to receive mercy because they are very unmerciful to others. Their outlook on other people is critical and judgmental. That is the opposite of mercy. Mercy is not judging. Mercy is not criticizing. Mercy is not finding fault. And there is only one God and judge. And we've talked about this before. The Bible says there's only one God and one judge, the God of heaven and earth. You are not the judge of everybody around you. You are not the judge of those around you. And if you start speaking judgment, criticism, fault finding of those around you, beware because that is what can disqualify you from receiving mercy. Because when you don't show mercy, then you will not be qualified to receive mercy. This is one of the big qualifiers for receiving mercy. Being a merciful person. That means continually looking in forgiveness on everybody around you. When you see them do wrong, when you see them mess up, you show mercy on them. When you see them do something you don't like, you disagree with, you think it should be done a different way. Don't judge. Don't criticize. Don't do it. You don't want to cut yourself off from receiving mercy because the Bible says a lot about not judging. Don't judge because when you judge others, you yourself will be judged with the same judgment that you judge others with. Let me remind you of some scriptures Because we need to be reminded of this. This is so important for you to receive the mercy you need from God. So let me show you scriptures about judging. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye? That means to find fault with, 
something in another person, in what they're doing, the way they do it. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? That means correct them, correct your, your someone that, around you. When all the time there is a plank in your own eye, verse five, you hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. And notice there the the picture of the plank versus the speck. You will probably not ever notice that you've got a much bigger problem than the little nitpicky problem you're picking at that person about, the other person. When you're nitpicking at another person, nitpicking about their problems, you don't realize you've got a much bigger problem. Your problem is judging and criticizing. Luke 6, 37, Luke 6, 37. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. So notice that you judge Do not judge or you will be judged. Romans chapter two, verse one, Romans two, one, you therefore have no excuse. You who pass judgment on someone else for at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same things. Well, you might think, well, I don't do that. You do something of the same nature. You do something of the same nature. It might not be the very same thing they're doing, but something of a similar nature. You are doing it yourself. And so you who pass judgment are doing the same thing. And Romans 14, verse 4. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To his own master, he stands or falls. And he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. And verse 10, Romans fourteen ten, You then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down? On your brother, for we will all stand before God's judgment seat. Why do you judge your brother looking down on another person? Romans 14, 13, verse 13 says, stop passing judgment on one another. That's just it. Bottom line. Stop it. Stop it. Stop passing judgment on one another. And James 4:12, James 4:12, there is only one lawgiver and judge. The one who is able to save and destroy. But who you, who are you to judge your neighbor? You are not the one lawgiver and judge. God is. So who are you to judge your neighbor? And James 2, 13, 2, 13, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Now, judgment includes criticism. Criticism. What is criticism? Criticism means to find fault with, to find fault with, or to express disapproval of something or someone to find fault with, 
to express disapproval of something or someone. And so you are not to criticize anybody. Criticizing is judging. And so remember Matthew 5, 7, blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. Luke 6, 36, Luke 6, 36, be merciful just as your father is merciful. And James 2.13 again, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So something that you can start practicing. This is something that I have practiced. That is when I am tempted to criticize or find fault with someone. Or for example, when you're driving down the road and you're tempted to get angry at another driver for what they did, they're cutting in front of you. They're cutting you off or whatever. Learn and practice saying, Lord, have mercy on them. Lord, have mercy on them. And I have mercy on them. I have mercy on them. Lord, have mercy on them. Practice speaking mercy over other people around you that you see are doing things wrong or doing things the way you disapprove or you disagree, you think it should be done a different way, rather than finding fault, disapproving, criticizing, all of that is judging. Instead of that, show mercy. And you can do that by saying, Lord, I have mercy on them. Lord, you have mercy on them. And when you start turning your heart to position, let me say it like this, passing judgment and criticizing and fault finding hardens your heart toward other people. But having mercy on them softens your heart toward them. Let me say that again. Finding fault, criticizing, and judging others hardens your heart toward them. But having mercy on them softens your heart toward them. And we are always supposed to have a soft, tender heart. Remember, the Bible says, be tender hearted. Ephesians 4.32 in the King James Version says, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Tender hearted, forgiving one another. You see, that is mercy. Mercy is forgiving others. And to continually forgive. And every time you see the wrongdoing of another person, just forgive, forgive. Uh, just immediately, I forgive that. I forgive that. You know, you can practice when you're driving down the road and you see people do stupid things driving on the road, say, I forgive that. I forgive that person. I forgive that. I forgive that. When you're at work with your coworkers, they do something you don't like to yourself. Say, I forgive that. I forgive that. I forgive that one. I forgive that one with your spouse, with your family members. They say something or do something that you don't like or that bothers you. You just quickly practice saying, I forgive that. I forgive that. I forgive that. And if you will c practice forgiveness continually, you are training yourself 
to be merciful to others. And when you are merciful to others, then you yourself can receive mercy. And one other way to practice showing mercy is by praying for others. When you pray for others, you are having mercy on them. You're praying for God to forgive them, bless them, help them, watch out for them. Then you're not judging them, but you are having mercy on them. So praying for other people is another way for you to show mercy, but to always speak mercy. Lord, have mercy on them. I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive this. I forgive that all day long. There's things around you all the time that other people do that can bother you. But if you will practice continually saying, I forgive that, I forgive that, then you are practicing showing mercy. And when you practice showing mercy, then you will qualify to receive mercy yourself because blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. And remember James 2.13, mercy triumphs over judgment. Now, as I've said yesterday, and I think at the beginning of this program, that this is going to lead us into now a study on healing. But I wanted to lead up to it because we need to realize that healing is a grace. It's a gift, a free gift. Grace is God's free gifts and God's intense desire and passion and joy to give liberally and lavishly. And his mercy is being compassionate toward the undeserving, not giving the judgment you do deserve and giving you the gifts and benefits and blessings you don't deserve. And when we learn that, we can learn to receive healing because healing is a grace of God. It's a gift. And it is an act of God's mercy. And as I read to you yesterday, let me remind you real quickly, several scriptures in the ministry of Jesus where he healed and it was called mercy. Remember in Matthew chapter nine, verses 35 and 36. I'm, uh, well, let me start with verse 27 so you can see this story. Verse 27, Jesus went on from there and two blind men followed him calling out, have mercy on us, son of David. And so he had mercy on them. He touched their eyes and they received their sight. And then Matthew 20, again, two blind men sitting by the road and they called out, Lord, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them and they came and he gave them their sight and it was in mercy. And then in Mark chapter five, the demoniac was delivered the 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 madman at Gadara, the man full of a legion of demons and Jesus cast the demons out and they 2000 pigs ran into the sea and died. And then Jesus said to the man who was delivered, Mark 5, 19, go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. Praise God. So we see their mercy as an act of God's healing. Jesus healed the sick in mercy. And then Matthew 9, 35 and 36. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing 
every sickness and every disease among the people. Verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. And so he had compassion on them. And remember, mercy is coming out of compassion. It's being moved with compassion to relieve the afflicted, the needy, the miserable, the oppressed and relieving them, being moved to do something to relieve their pain, their misery, their affliction, their need, whatever it is. And so you see there that he healing is included in the mercy of God. Now, I just want to pray for you real quickly. Father, I pray for every person listening to this program right now in Jesus name. And if they are in pain, if they are in misery or affliction, I ask you to have mercy on them right now in Jesus name. And we command pain to go from your body, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. We command every organ, tissue, bone, every cell of your body be healed in Jesus name. Thank you. Lord, for showing mercy on your people today. We thank you and praise you for healing in Jesus name. Amen. Now join me again tomorrow and remember God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.